Hello and welcome to another edition of Workforce Water Cooler. I'm Leslie and joining me are Brian and John. And we are so happy to have the old gang back together again. Hey, 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 hey. It seems seems like it's 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 been it's been a long time. It so. has been. And Brian is old. That's what it, that's I think that's what the hey hey was about. Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe so. Well, I am I am so happy to see to see your all smiling faces and ready to dive into this water cooler. And I think it is worth noting that Brian is actually by the water cooler. Brian, can you give us any insight? I got my complimentary beverage. Um, it's humming along nicely. It's cold. Is it high quality H2O? Some high, high, high qu quality H2O. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Best movie of all time. Awesome. Awesome. Well, well, we we are trying to mix up our our backdrops today. If you if you've noticed. Um, John, John is on site and he will reveal his location in just a moment. I am still in my home office, but I am, I have moved to a different corner of the room and you can see my, my Neil Diamond poster in all its glory. I, I can do a mean lip sync to America. Just FYI. It, it's on YouTube. And I'm wearing a sparkly jacket. Well, we're going to have to look that up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So we're doing different backdrops. We're trying to mix things up because today we're talking about innovation in the Very, very timely topic. So, John, will you kick us off into this discussion about innovation in the workforce? Uh, sure. So um, I'll start with kind of like a, a little bit of context and background. Um, as as our as our viewers that have paid close attention to this workforce water cooler segment um, probably already know, we've been talking about workforce participation for quite a while. It was the focus of our summit last fall, um, and then it's been the what that evolved into uh, in in early December was a series of working groups. We've, we've had a working group uh, of, of some folks here, particularly around Warren County, but a, a lot of the folks in the working group are regionally focused uh, on this topic of workforce participation. And, and the group has been meeting. It started out as every two weeks and it's evolved every three weeks. And, and then over the course of the last um, couple of meetings, we've uh, really you know, we've come to the realization that although there's some good work happening and some good discussion happening, uh, it's not enough to focus on this topic once every couple of weeks. And so there's a movement afoot for us to, um, you know, uh, find some money so that we can get some staff and really evolve this thing into a workforce participation task force and really hone in and put a laser focus on how do we solve our regional workforce participation challenges? And um, so anyway, uh, it, kind of along those lines, uh, there's money that's been kind of committed and some money has been raised at least towards uh, hiring one of two positions that we would like to see, um, you know, kind of take on this challenge. And um, what's also happened is um, we have been invited and given space in the WK. WKU's new innovation campus, which is a uh, which hasn't publicly launched yet. So I'm sitting in it today and it's fairly quiet. But this is a 30,000 foot, 30,000 square foot space, collaborative space that's meant to house uh, different initiatives, innovation initiatives for okay. the region. Quick question, John. Do they know that you're there? Or have you snuck in? Is this a covert operation? I wouldn't say it's covert. Uh, there's a side door and I've got key. You know, basically what happened after one of these meetings, they basically said, hey, John, um, we need we would love to have you kind of lead this effort and come in and create a workforce innovation lab inside of this space. And so 
Brian and I have both been given keys, and we've actually hosted the last couple of meetings in this space. So, but there's a there's a side entrance that so that I don't I don't really have to pass anybody coming in. Okay, I don't have a key, so I'm not I'm not in the upper echelon group. So I would really like to see what this space looks like. Is it possible for you to walk around? As you're talking, and Brian and I will be talking too. I just think that would be that would be good to see what it looks like. And Leslie, glad- I thought you were going to ask if he's if he's hiding out behind that tree there. He's sitting on the ground, crisscross applesauce to avoid the laser the laser beam security system. <laughs> Did you drop down from the ceiling? Like- <laughs> I, I I that could be arranged. <laughs> So, I, yeah, I'll walk around and I would just say, I mean, imagine this is a co-working collaborative space um, and I'll start to I'll flip the camera and I'll walk around. But imagine, I mean, again, it's not officially open to the public and launched yet, but, you know, you can you can kind of visualize different groups working out of here. And um, and part of what happens when you um, so I'm going to start just kind of panning around. And walking around. So part of what happens when you commit to working out of this collaborative space is you agree to let anybody in here can kind of come in, see what you're doing and engage you in conversation and um, and contribute to whatever it is you're working on. And that's kind of a that's kind of a cool uh, feature of this space. And so what you've got is you've got uh, a lot of uh, open cubicles and these can be. You know, these can be, uh, you know, you can come in and and set up shop here. There's a couple of companies that do come in here and work out of here one or two days a week already. And, you know, they've got basically assigned cubicle spaces. Um, there's like incredibly high speed fiber uh, connection here. So it's uh, it's it's got, it's it's got a lot of nice features uh, for for a co-working space. Um, it's going to have. Uh, you know, kind of looking, if you look straight out, um, there's a behind that wall there on one side, there's a conference room straight ahead. There's bathrooms and to the left behind that wall is a large kitchen. Um, so anyway, the uh, the premise is, is that we're going to set up an innovation lab and we're, we've actually been given. We've already signed a lease agreement at no cost because they really want us here. And we're going to kind of get this corner of the there's a room that I'm walking towards and we're going to get a, a, um, a small, what we're going to call a war room back here, which is really just a small, basically it's just a small, uh, conference room. But the idea is that, um, you know, we'll have this corner and then we're going to have this is going to be set up as a war room. All right. I think I'm getting some feedback because my laptop's on in here. Are you guys hearing feedback? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Okay. All right. So, well, I'll transition back over to that in a minute. But the idea that the idea is we're going to set up. Let me get away from this laptop. The idea is we're going to set up a war room over here and a co-working space, and we're going to, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna identify different uh, challenges that need to be solved for short-term challenges intermediate and long-term challenges uh, on how to get more people back to work, how to get people recruited to the region for uh, our jobs, how to, what to, you know, we have to anticipate how our economy is going to change. I'm sorry, Leslie. I, I was just going to say, don't walk into that column. It looked like you were getting, you were getting very close. Well, a lot, a lot of what you're saying, John and Brian, tell me, tell me if I'm on the right track. A lot of what you're saying about this, you know, this task force housed at the innovation campus, this is the same kind of stuff that we were we were talking about with our workforce summit. So these things pretty much go hand in hand. Brian, do you do you agree? Yeah, you know, there was so many things that were identified as needing attention and and what we're hoping is that we'll have some dedicated staff as john's describing here that can you know really try to tackle these issues and bring the people in that need to be involved on our on a on a regular basis not just event based not just you know for meetings but regularly like kind of a think tank um tactical type of group 
Yeah, I, I, what we envision is, you know, one or two folks here that really help frame it, frame the issues, frame the challenges. And then, you know, what we can we can leverage this space by bringing different people in. We could bring in grad students to help us solve a particular challenge or pr- put ideas together. Or perhaps there's going to be professors or industry leaders uh, from the community that want to come in and tackle, you know, one of these um uh, one of these challenges. So what we kind of see is framing out maybe some different subcommittees to tackle different challenges. You know, we could have a subcommittee focus on, for example, um, you know, how is our economy going to change based on this announcement about electric vehicles between the Ford plant and the Envision plant? What does that mean to the economy? What another one potentially could be there's talk about high speed rail coming to the region. Well, what would that mean? How do we how do we how do we account for what that means in terms of does it bring workers into the region or does it help our workers go outside of the region to work? Um, how do we another challenge is how do we how do we change attitudes towards work? That's a really long term. Cultural attitudinal challenge, and, and that may involve, you know, how do we activate our faith community and our coaches and other community influencers to talk about the values of the value that comes with working, the self-worth, the the physical, mental, social benefits that come with working. How do we have how do we get back to having those conversations with youth and adults and, and motivate more people to get back into the workforce? So but so it's not like one or two people are going to figure all that out. But out of this kind of creative, collaborative space, can we organize different challenges or problem sets to solve and then bring in people to kind of volunteer and help us solve some of this. And so that's that's what's kind of cool and innovative about this approach is that we're going to activate uh, and harness the, the 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 brain power of our community to help us figure some of this out. And, it's and, so and look at it from a regional and from a regional develop right. regional solutions. Right. And the the whole focus of the task force and what came out of our summit and really what the board is tasked with doing is increasing workforce participation. Every, you know, all of these different things we're talking about, we're trying to get people back into the workforce or we're, we're trying to, to motivate people who've never been in the workforce to, you know, to take that step. So, As many different ways as we can tackle that problem, I think that, you know, that it is it is absolutely worth the effort. You know, we we our region is only as strong as its workforce. And we have to increase participation. So I think it's it's very cool. Just, you know, the, the space looks very neat. And the idea of having, you know, staff devoted to this one sole issue and bringing in different people and and tackling it from different perspectives. I mean, that's incredible. It is. We uh, you know, we've the the city of Bowling Green and Warren County have uh, committed some money to this. Uh, I'm. Um, you know, I'm doing my, I, I think I'm going to be able to carve out a little bit of our money for this uh, to break in some of our money for it. Uh, there's already been uh, two grants submitted. You know, you know we're hoping to find out, uh, you know, uh, whether we secure that funding or not. But I mean, so, I mean, I think there's enough money that we can get started with one person. And, um, and, and hopefully there's some more money coming into this and that we can. We can really devote, you know, devote somebody to really organizing this for us. And uh, the general idea is they would be they'd come in, they'd come onto the workforce board payroll, and this would be their sole job, and they would work and report back to back to you know the leadership of the board. Brian, what did I miss on this? No, I think you you got it. I mean, there's just yeah, there's continued. Continue the momentum from the fall uh, because this part this problem was just not going away. You know, I think back to last summer how we thought, oh, you know, the benefits they're going to stop the unemployment insurance pandemic benefits and people are going to come back and we were all sitting around, you know, like this or we thought, oh, you know, 
some of the summer camps were closed and not fully operational. But when school opens back up, then then the moms and dads, everybody's going to jump back in because their daycare woes will go away. And we just didn't see it. You know, I'm sure it worked for some people. Um, and and obviously COVID, we had we had arguably the worst spike of COVID, you know, happening. And and I mean, there's people I know that were without COVID the whole time that got COVID, you know, the, this past winter. Um, it certainly affected in, you know, my family that we were able to kind of dodge those bullets and it and it hit us. And so it's just, you know, um, it, it feels like, though, people are more optimistic that we're emerging from some things that, you know, there's there's nothing else to wait for. But what we found out was that it's exposed a lot of just deep rooted problems that, that weren't necessarily caused by the pandemic. They were amplified by the pandemic. And so. We've got to we've got to get to those root causes. So it's it's exciting to think we're going to have people going after that. You know, I mean, I, this is I'm going to go back to like put my old veterans hat on. But we used to at one point in time, I was in a a, a, a class, uh, kind of a long class um, in the military. And we there was a segment of the class where we uh, we, we focused on what's called wicked problem theory and the the. the what well, wicked problem theory basically posits that some problems are so complex and multi labor multi layered they can't be they can't be easily untangled or solved. There's no easy solution, and that's kind of what we have going on here. Is there's a lot of causal factors going on to workforce participation, and so what we have to do is solve try to I, kind of isolate and solve for different chunks of it to put a dent in it. And that's that that's kind of what I was describing before. Let's figure out what those solvable chunks are, get them organized and then bring in folks to help us come up with solutions to that. Whatever that chunk is and and some of those will hopefully help us solve some of our near term labor shortages and some of them are going to be. Longer term efforts, I mean, some of its policy, some of its cultural attitudinal, some of its. You know, some of it's going to involve, you know, employers have to adjust. I mean, there's that 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 if there was one thing we learned in, in that came out loud and clear in the four different workforce summits we did last fall is. Uh, it's a job seekers market right now, and employers are all trying to struggle. They're all struggling to figure out how to adjust to the job seeker who now has choices. Who can quit his job at lunchtime and go drive an Uber within an hour and still have income coming in. Right. I mean, it is a different marketplace. and so. Um, yeah, we just got to get we got to we got to get this going and get our community and our brain power in the community working on this because the prosperity of our community is directly tied to workforce. How many people are working? How many people are making money? How many people are paying paying taxes that support our schools and our police and our parks? I mean, it all it's all intertwined. So. Leslie, would the great Neil Diamond have any words of wisdom for us right now? Do you think? Um, I mean, he he would definitely definitely say, you know, they're they're coming to America. <laughs> I mean, this is a land of an of opportunity, and I think you know, South Central Kentucky, which is located in America is and and we've seen this over and over again it's ranked as one of the best places to live over and over again different you know different magazines have reported it different you know it it's a fact this is one of the greatest places to live in america see there's there's neil doing his america thing um and we want to sustain that and the way we can sustain it is keeping our workforce thriving, encouraging people to, you know, to to find meaningful employment and maintain that. And as a workforce board, we need to let people know about these opportunities. And we also need to help employers, you know, get that message out there. We we found out loud and clear with COVID it's not as easy as saying, hey, a thousand dollar sign on bonus. We saw everybody and their brother doing that. And it it's not it's not that simple. Uh, just like John said, this is a multi-layered, multi-faceted issue. 
And the fact that, and I mean, really, we've got breaking news here, you know, a sneak preview of, I'm sure, a big announcement in the future um, about this this whole innovation campus program. Um, the fact that we're we're looking at tackling it, I mean, very I wouldn't say aggressively, but assertively, we're, you know, we're trying to get out in front of this so that that we can thrive as a region. And I'm I'm so happy and so proud to be a part of this organization that is taking such steps. So Neil Neil would say, you know, they're coming to America. But we know in his heart he's saying they're coming to South Central Kentucky because it's the best place to live. It's the best place to work. Had I known that Neil Diamond would have been on the dock today, I would have I would have like grown out my sideburns and, and grown out my hair a little bit more. Well, you know, maybe maybe I can superimpose some some hair <laughs> in in the editing process. Oh, uh, OK. I'll trust. I'm going to trust you on that, Leslie. All right. All right. You do that. <laughs> you do that. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I walked so, out to that song um, at, at our wedding reception when we were getting introduced. All the the you know people in the the, the bride and groom's party. Um, since my wife is from South America, we, we said we want to have that song blasting as we we get introduced back out from. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. That is that is like it's one of my favorite songs of all time. And there's a big story that goes along with it, but that would take up two water coolers. So I will I will sp- I'll I'll tell y'all the the backstory at a later date. But I'll send you the YouTube link of me of my performance that Neil saw. Yes. Post it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. If if y'all won't be too embarrassed, I'll I will post it in the comments. Yeah, it's a lot easier to get Leslie's concert uh, participation than it is workforce participation. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we you know we but but that approach may work. Maybe maybe that's what it takes. You know, if that if if it if it it requires me putting on a blue sparkly Neil Diamond jacket to get people fired up about workforce participation, I'm down for it. Okay, noted. All right. All right well, thank you so much, John. I appreciate your willingness to to show us this very cool space. Um, I'm excited about what's to come. Brian, I'm glad the water is is flowing and is a good temperature and it doesn't look like you will need to refill it very soon that's always a daunting task to do that yeah there's a there's a wrong way to refill these things for sure <laughs> when you when you take when you take the plug out first um and then yeah. try to put it upside down don't don't do that yeah yeah I've seen people try to do that before and the water just goes all over the place it's a yeah. it's an h2o mess yeah, that's that's not a water cooler that that we want to have for sure. All right, thanks for joining us and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.